Welcome back to the Fuller Fanatic channel. Today, I'll be doing things a little bit different. I sent my brother a pair of three lightweight and he has never been into knives, but he's just starting to take interest. So I wanted to upload a visual breakdown and a walkthrough slash demo of some key features on the paramilitary three. I figured why not share this with the public? By the way, happy birthday, Dre. Miss you, big bro. Let's start with the specs on the pair of three. My pair of three, the G10 original model, comes in with an overall length of 7.27 inches. The blade length is three inches with a cutting edge of 2.5 inches. The handle length is 4.27 inches with a thickness of 0.45 of an inch and a blade thickness of 0.15 of an inch. The PM3 weighs in at 3.4 ounces with a stainless steel frame liner lock and with a full flat grind on a satin finished blade. But of course, I've etched Vincent Van Gogh's Smoky Nights onto mine. The blade is S30V. The variant I sent to you, Dre, is the Para 3 Lightweight Serrated Edge with a smaller blade thickness at 0.14 of an inch, a larger handle thickness at 0.46 of an inch, and a change in scale material from G10 to FRN. And the biggest difference is the weight reduction, with the lightweight shaving off almost an entire ounce, coming in at 2.5 ounces. So, I made this particular video for you, so I can share the features you need to know first in order to operate your PM3 correctly. The PM3's compression locking system is the first feature that really sets this apart from other knives. Unlike most others, i.e. frame and liner locking knives, the PM3's liner lock is located on the top of the handle, so your fingers never cross the blade's closing path during disengagement. So I want you to get used to actuating the lock via your right middle finger. Oh yeah, this is a right-handed version. And although we are both left-handed, and I'm a lefty from watching my big brother, but trust me, Dre, learn knives with your right hand so you can fidget in your right while still doing other things. At any rate, get comfortable using the lock while holding the knife with the other three fingers and thumb up on the handle. And you can hold the knife's spidey hole up while practicing so it's not flying out. And you may ask, what do you mean flying out? It's a manual. Well, there's a simple test to tune my pair of threes and or see if they're tuned properly. To check, hold your pair of three spider hole side down and then press the compression lock. The blade should come flying out and swinging like a pendulum from its inertia. And this should happen with you holding your hand steady and still. No need to shake it back and forth or it isn't tuned. As well as if you shake it back and forth and it doesn't swing freely, it's out of tune. And Dre, you can adjust this by turning your pivot screw until the correct and desired tension on the knife is achieved, but you want the blade to remain centered when making adjustments. Don't worry though, I definitely clean, oiled, and tuned your pair of three before sending it, so you're good to go. Now get used to slow rolling or cat's pawing the PM3 for a deployment method. Place your thumb's fatty part in the spidey hole, then rotate around the pivot while holding the handle with the remaining fingertips and the base of the thumb until you hear the addictive click of the compression engaging. Some people complain about the lock pinching on their palm skin, etc. It's happened to me before and it's nothing at all to worry about. And don't think you're doing something wrong if this happens a couple times. Just readjust finger placement. Now let's really get into the crux of the spidey hole the star of the Para 3 show, so to speak. And this is used for fast deployment methods. This thing has become one of the most fidget fun items ever to hit the market. Now, if you wanna feel extra safe until you get comfortable, the two-handed deployment is always an option. Just pinch around or in the spidey hole and pull around the pivot. Now I'm going to stop here and say the closing also has a tune in it in my mind. The Para 3's blade should fall from virtually a vertical angle but also be free enough to have about three bounces when reaching the stop pin and not being locked in. Notice the three bounces if I don't lock it up. So you can also two hand close the knife until you get comfortable. The first way I learned to close the pair of three, I believe now knowing more, was and still is the hardest. From the vertical open position, you engage the compression, releasing the blade, sending it falling, and you release the compression bar, engaging the detent at the precise moment, catching the blade, ending in the perfect falling retraction. This is going to differ from knife to knife, plus the tune on said knife. It's kind of a timing thing, and you just have to gain a feel for your knife, I guess. The most adored deployment, I believe, to be is the reverse flick or middle finger flick. And you accomplish this by rotating the handle so it's going in more of a parallel direction of the fingers than to the base of the palm. Place the index finger under the pivot out of the blade's path of direction. Gain leverage by placing your thumb on the top side of the handle, pushing the butt of the knife into the palm. Now fully extend your pinky and ring finger out of the blade's path also. Now place your middle finger and really just the tip of your middle finger. The ring should be mid finger now 
then flick upwards around the pivot. Your mind may think to go out towards the left initially, but that's wrong. You need to go upwards. And be careful not to fling the knife across the room out of your hands. It sounds silly, but it can easily happen. And just practice this for a while till you get comfortable. Then we have the swing or whip shut clause where you squeeze the compression lock and whip the blade around with a half circles wrist action. You can release the lock mid swing and the inertia will still carry the blade around and back into the handle. The detent will keep it there. Now on to the spidey drop and the gravity drop. For the spidey drop, you hold the spidey hole, pivot facing in the direction of the swing while pinching the hole and the blade of course with the knife and then end in an abrupt stop. The handle will break the detent and flip over revealing the blade. For the gravity drop, you hold the handle, pivot facing the direction of the swing, then you swing your hand downwards and stop quickly. The blade will absorb the motion energy, breaking the detent, and will come flying out. You also have the age-old original slow and fast thumb deployments. With the finger fat of the thumb placed in the spidey hole, flick the blade. This time, placing the base of the handle along the palm and gain a good purchase the same way as when you were cat's pawing. The faster thumb flick is done the same way but just bend the finger and use your fingernail. And with that, you can also extend this out to do the ring finger or pinky if you wish to. Now go learn it and have a blast. Love you, Dre. Please rate, share, and subscribe. Signing off from the Fuller Fanatic.